Move EFI system partition to another drive. I had a Windows 8 installation on an HDD, using UEFI as boot. The HDD has the following GPT table. I apologize it's in Italian, but the translation is quite straightforward. I recently bought an SSD drive, connected it and installed a fresh Windows 8. Now I have a working dual boot, but the UEFI partition is on the HDD instead of the SSD. Here's the SSD partition list. I think that the best solution would be to have it on the SSD for two reasons. The first is performance, I guess it would be a little bit faster on the SSD due to the spin-up time for an HDD, but I may be wrong about that. Second reason is consistency. As I plan to use only the Windows 8 installation that is located on the SSD and I'm probably going to erase the system partition on the HDD to use it as a data storage device, I think that the boot partition should be on the same drive as the OS. So the question is how do I move the EFI system partition to the SSD? My recommendation is to not bother. The performance improvement will be negligible, because the files read from the ESB are tiny and are read only when the computer boots. Furthermore, the partition itself is tiny by modern standards, so you won't recover enough space to make the effort worthwhile. Furthermore, the attempt to move the ESB runs a risk of creating boot problems that will take far more time to fix than any time you could possibly save an improved boot time from the move. If you want to go ahead and do this as a learning experience despite my recommendation, you'll need to look into. Creating an ESB with whatever partitioning software you like. I'm not sure how you do this with the standard Windows tools. With disk, you'd create a partition of type FOO, but you'd then need to create a FAT file system on it, since disk is a partitioning only tool, it doesn't handle file systems. Mounting both is simultaneously to copy files, or in sequence using temporary storage. I'm not sure how to do this in Windows, although it would be easy in Linux or from an EFI shell. It would be automatic in an EFI shell, in fact. Registering the bootloader on its new home. Using the fallback filename of EFI backslash boot backslash boot 64.EFI would likely be a simpler alternative, but is the less preferred method of loading the bootloader. The Windows bit at command and the EFI shell's BCFG tool can both register bootloaders, however, but edit is inflexible because Windows supports just one ESB, which creates problems when copying the especially. For people like me coming from Google, yes, it is possible to do this with Windows, without any third-party tools. Tested with Windows 10 Pro x64. I used this procedure to move both the EFI system partition and the system reserved partition. It should work on Windows 8 as well. If your primary drive lacks space, first you'll need to shrink your C, partition, or equivalent. I'm using 260 MB in this example as that's what newer drives require but older drives with smaller sectors only require 100 MB. If you don't need to make space, take note of the comments that indicate which steps you should skip. While you're at it, you probably want to move your system reserved partition. These are typically 1000 MB and store useful Windows metadata. You may find that some Windows features don't work without a system reserved partition. I've included the steps for creating such a partition on your primary drive and mark those steps with comments. It should be easy to exclude those steps if you'd rather skip them, but you'll need to alter the numbers when shrinking, for example, 260 MB instead of 1260 MB. Comments are prefixed with rem, for remark, 
as these are supported both by sendi.x and dispart.x. From sendi.x running as an administrator, It's time to reboot to make sure that everything works. You may need to update your BIOS boot order settings to match the changes. In my case, the BIOS settings were already correct, so I was stuck in a reboot loop. Each time I wanted to boot my computer, I had to manually select the old drive with the misplaced EFI partition. If everything worked as expected, you'll be able to delete the old EFI partition. If it didn't work, or your BIOS is still configured to boot from the old partition, Windows won't let you delete it, even if you use the override flag in dispart.x. Since you probably want to get rid of that old partition anyway, deleting it is a great way to make sure you're booting from the new partition. I know this is an old post, but I think a good answer is still wanted by many. This is applicable for Windows 7, 8, 10, and is also valid for Event ID 12290 if the S partition is situated on a disk other than the one that is the active OS and is to be backed up. First disconnect any other drive containing S partitions, so you don't accidentally change that one. Then you have to create a new partition at 100 to 300 MB on the disk you want the S partition to reside on. If the drive is full, first you have to shrink one of the existing partitions. Boot, in my case, Zubuntu 13, Ubuntu above 12.1 I think, from a USB stick, live. Don't install it. Open parted and create the partition and format it to FAT32. Flag the driver's boot and unflag any other partition flagged as boot. Also assign the new partition a drive letter if possible. If not, you can do it with disk part later on. Restart and now boot up with Windows. Re, recovery from the Windows installation DVD. Go to the command prompt. Start disk part and assign the new partition a drive letter if that was not possible in parted. Exit disk part but stay in the command prompt. Now you are going to copy the necessary files into the new partition. Note the spaces. Example, boot c column backslash windows slash s x column slash f u f i. This command will as well give the partition s status. Rebuild the bcd using the following command. Now when you are asked what else you'd like to add to the s partition, you say yes to the ones you want to include and no to the ones you don't want to be able to boot into. As in my case I recently upgraded to Windows 10, and as you might know, Windows will store your old Windows 7 8s for a while if you haven't deleted it yourself. This copy of your old OS is not something you normally like to be able to boot into. It normally resides in, Windows.old. So don't choose the all alternative. I don't know, but I think that this command only searches for Windows installations. If you got a Linux OS for example on the same computer, then you have to use something like get it afterwards to get the on the boot mani as well. There is a last command, which I didn't use. I have tried to learn more apps out the command and I think it just set the boot flag on the S partition and makes it bootable. This should be the same as when I flagged the S partition as boot in carded. 
If there was another ESP partition you no longer want, the easiest way is to boot into Linux slash card it again and delete it from there. I created a fresh installation on the new SSD disk by using genuine W10 installation ISO DVD. The installation went to MBR type instead of GPT. I needed secure boot so I had to convert this new installation without data loss from MBR to GPT. Then I created free space 260 MB by shrinking last NTFS partition at the end of the disk. I booted Linux from system recuit from USB stick and used parted, but disk manager from Windows 10 could be used too. Then I formatted this new small partition to FAT32, it could be done in Windows or in Linux too. I copied files from the original EFI to this new partition, I did it in Linux because Windows do not like two disks with drive letter named C. Then I changed MVR to GPT by disk in Linux. I used the disk and then the small partition has to be changed to type FOO, EFI, and marked as bootable, should be only one, so the bootable flag should be removed from the original bootable drive C. Then I changed booting type in the setup of the notebook to UFI only just to be sure that it really boots by EFI. Windows did not boot as there was some file missing with EFI in its name. Then I booted from Windows 10 installation DVD, picked rescue system and then something like fix boot problems. Then when 10 booted with no problem, no manual intervention needed by boot. The EFI configuration could be checked by Ethibootware utility in Linux. If you want to support the channel, please consider subscribing.